Hello, Kelsey from Dahlgren. I think I know you. D Dania, I believe, from Mulkey Town. Oh, someone said, hello, daughter. That would be my mother. Hi, mom. Hi, Sedona. Brittany. Hi, Brittany. Pam Martin. Hello, Pam. Margaret Carter. Hello, Margaret. Hey, Christy. And Heidi. Thanks, guys. We've got 21 now. We're going to start right on time, and it's 11.59, so I'll give it just another um, 60 seconds or so, and then I'll go ahead and do the housekeeping portion of this. We're on remote location today at Don Johnson's home. She has a beautiful home and she asked me to turn her video off, at, video off at the very beginning so we don't see her over there like rapidly rereading her notes. <laughs> Fun fact, um, Dawn has printed them out in large font, so don't <laughs> panic when you see the stack, the ream of paper in front of her. <laughs> true, true. All right, we're up to 25. <laughs> Becky Jones is joining us. Hey, Leslie. Yes, you are muted. Um, we chose to do this as a webinar instead of a Zoom meeting. And what that means is you can see and hear all of us as the panelists, unless we mute and turn our videos off, but we cannot see nor hear you. So I know that will make everyone feel much more comfortable. Good morning, Charlotte. All right, I've got 28 people on now and it's straight up noon. So let me go over the housekeeping part of this. There are some options I want to explain to you if you have or have not been on, on a Zoom webinar before. There are different views that you can choose. Um, and that just chooses how the layout of your screen looks. So if you hover over your screen or move your mouse in the top right hand corner, you're going to see it will either say speaker view or gallery view. Um, so you can play with that and toggle it back and forth however you like it. Um, you might like it best on speaker view and that's going to put the person who is speaking as the loud or the biggest place on your screen. Then we also have a chat function and if you'll again hover over your screen or move your mouse you will see a place where you can turn on that chat function and it will open on the right side and you'll be able to chat with us as we go through and I'm going to be monitoring the chat as Dawn does the presentation. So um, if there's any technical difficulties or anything, you know, you can type in there or any questions or um, if you didn't hear or understand something, you can put that in there as well. We are going to do a, a few polls during this webinar. So when we do a poll, it will actually be a pop up on your screen and you will have a chance to answer the question. So we're going to ask a question, but don't type the answer in the chat wait until the poll pops up on your screen and that way we can get an accurate um, feedback from everybody that's on. And then um, I also encourage you to try to focus on us, try not to multitask too much. Um, we find that if you're an active participant in the webinar, in the chat, in the polls, you're gonna get more out of this. So we just, you know, ask you to try to focus on us as much as you can. And then you will also receive an email tomorrow that has a copy of Dawn's presentation, some links to some resources that she's gonna share with you today, and um, a link to the replay as well. So um, if you're, you don't catch something, know that you're gonna get a link to the replay tomorrow and you can rewatch it. Cause I know she's gonna share some, 
really good information. I've met with her a couple of times in the last week just to test and, and work things out since we are not at the church, we're on location. I wanted to make sure all the technology worked good. And I've learned so much just in chatting with her over the plan that, of what she's going to share today. So I know she's going to share some really good information for you. So at this point, I'm going to mute my mic and unmute Dawn, and we're going to hand it off over to her. So give me just a second, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, well, good morning, afternoon, happy Tuesday, and thank you to all that are joining, whether you're catching us live or um, catching the replay later on. Um, today is week two of Reset Your Routine, and if any of you missed last week, Becky started us out, and she did a phenomenal job on the topic of anxiety, whether it's something that um, you deal with daily, or just in the normal ups and downs of life. She just gave some good practical takeaways. And so if that's something that you didn't get a chance to see, um, I feel like Pastor Mark, he always tells all these things you can do online. I don't know, but he does. <laughs> so if you miss that, I definitely email her or chat to her or whatever. And um, she will make sure that you get that link because Becky did a great job. And so today on week two, we are going to dive into the topic of nutrition. And I want to start with two disclaimers. <laughs> One, I'm a realtor. I, I sell homes for a living. So I am not a doctor. I'm not even a certified nutritionist. Um, I'm probably close with the, the hours and classes and the seminars that I participated in just out of sheer interest. Um, but Anything that I say today, please do not take as medical advice. These are just tips and tricks um, that we've learned and used for ourselves and our family along the way that we've implemented. And so if there is something that you can take and hang on to, um, we would love that. I would love that. But know that I am not a medical profession. And then the second disclaimer, I maybe shouldn't share this, but when Tammy asked me if I wanted to be a part, I glanced at my text and did not read it thoroughly. And I actually thought she would participate in like a round table discussion with four other ladies. And I said, absolutely, that sounds fantastic. We've been inside all spring, it's been rainy, we've been stuck at home, and we were each gonna talk about our little topic. And so I said, yes, I committed without hesitation. And then it was later that I learned that all of you would actually be here with us. <laughs> so after I had a small heart attack and I prayed about it, I decided that yes, I would do that. Um, and I've been in women's ministry for years, and I do enjoy speaking and sharing, but I have to tell you, this is the first time ever that I have spoken into a screen, and I'm a face-to-face -face feedback kind of person, so just give us grace and bear with us, as it's a new format for many of us. Okay, I want you to pause just to It's, it's marbled for some reason. Okay. So we are going to do a little switcheroo. Okay, we're flexible. Um, stop that video. All right. Okay. Start talking. Okay. So we are getting through some technical difficulties. If you're just joining us, you can say a little prayer that the weather and the storm. 
Tammy has the hard job here. And you can give her feedback and tell her if you can see us or hear us and what that looks like. She'll be happy to take that in. Okay, I think we're good now. I'm gonna close the chat so that doesn't make you crazy. Seems very close. It does seem very close, <laughs> but your hair looks awesome. Your makeup's good. Um, and you can talk to these other panelists now. Okay, Norma and Becky, I, I see you. <laughs> I actually don't see you, I see your names. <laughs> so, okay. So if, am I good to continue? That you are so I can figure out how to monitor the chat on my phone now. Okay. So okay. as I was saying, this is definitely a new format for all of us and we're adjusting and much like every business owner and pastor and speaker has had to the last few months. So bear with us. Um, but the good thing, the cool thing about technology is, you know, maybe we're reaching people that we would never get to in a room or proximity. So we're just gonna go with it and we're gonna make it work. So as my husband would say, put your, put your big girl panties on and make it, met do. <laughs> so um, what I wanna do today is kind of share a little bit about um, where I came from and share a little bit about what brought me to the point of where I had this passion um, for nutrition and then kind of where we are current day. So I'll start with, I'm sure there's many of you that probably have no clue who I am, <laughs> where I came from. So let me just introduce myself. My name is Dawn Johnson and my husband, Benji, is a native of Southern Illinois. I am not. And we've been married 22 years next week, actually. And we have three teenagers. So you can add me on your prayer list at any time. <laughs> and they're pretty good kids. We have our teenage moments, but for the most part, um, I think every mother goes through a phase where they're like, I wish I could just freeze my kids at this stage. And I can honestly say, even though the teenage years are supposed to be all wild, I would freeze my kids where they're at. They're fun, they can go to the bathroom by themselves, they can dress themselves, um, they can do errands for me. And I, this may be the last year I can ever say they're all under my roof. So I think if I could freeze them right now, I would do that. So they're, they're pretty good kiddos. But I actually grew up in central Illinois on a farm and my dad um, still lives in that farmhouse today. And so I saw firsthand with nutrition, like literally from farm to table. I grew up, um, you know, riding tractors and, and watching my dad harvest. My grandmother lived to be, I think, 96 and was gardening till the day she died. So we saw firsthand um, just the basics of, of farm to table. I also grew up with a mother who has the gift of hospitality. She is an amazing cook, was and still is. And maybe like many of your grandmothers or your moms or maybe you, she showed love with food. And so the more that my mom loved you, the more butter she used, the more cheese she used, the more oil she used. <laughs> Some of you maybe are shaking your head right along with. And it was nothing for her to have on the dinner table every single night for, for my dad and his farmhands to have fried chicken and homemade mashed potatoes and gravy and biscuits and corn. And what I would consider a spread for a holiday is what she did every night. And so, you know, there's this theory, uh, a quote of, we should eat to live, meaning we get nutrition and we should, we should eat to live not live to eat. And I have to say, we definitely grew up, we live to eat. And when you have a cook that good, we were excited about the next meal. And so much of our culture and our society, it's everywhere. Everything in our society is celebrated with food. We celebrate the holidays. We celebrate the good times. We 
um, we actually drown our sorrows in food. Like everything comes back to food in our culture. And, you know, if you are someone that's been blessed to maybe be the same weight and size your whole life, and you've never had to worry about food allergies or food intolerances, you may not even notice how much food is part of our society. Um, however, I am not someone personally that was blessed with any of that. <laughs> I have food allergies. I have food intolerances. I did, uh, you know, so I grew up very aware that food was, was a part of everything. And I also grew up with a mom who she is beautiful. She has six sisters. I'm the youngest of three daughters, I should say, all girls in my family. And I grew up with a mother who is beautiful on the inside and out and a beautiful godly woman. Um, but from the time that I even have a memory, I'm going to go back to maybe 10 or 11 years old. I can remember watching my mom, you know, do her makeup or get ready for church or for a wedding or whatever the occasion. And I just remember a lot of negative self-talk. And I didn't understand that because she looked great to me. She was perfect. She was beautiful. But somewhere, and she never did that to us. She never, you know, like did that to her daughters. But somewhere subconsciously from hearing that, I took hold of that. And so as I continued through my junior high and my high school and my college and even into my marriage, over time, I began, and, and now in a healthy place, I can look back and actually see how unhealthy it was. Um, I did not have a good mindset. I did not have a healthy relationship with food. And I had a very unhealthy um, relationship with an idea of body image. And when I looked in the mirror, it was absolutely not what other people saw but it was years into that before I, I realized that. And so I kind of wanted to share a little bit of that where I came from, um, because I think many of us of women, we just make that a natural thing. Like we talk negative about ourselves. We, we see ourselves and ew, we don't like that, or I look bad, or I don't, you know, things like that. And it becomes the norm, um, but it shouldn't be. And it, it was the norm for me. And I was about a year into my first year of marriage. And I remember being in Chicago at a Beth Moore um, conference, women's conference. And so to back up, my husband has amazing godly qualities, but he was an athlete his whole life. He was a coach. And so probably one of his giftings is not um, empathy or coddling if you would and so he he definitely has the gift of truth I guess that's a nice way of saying it and so when I said things like that or would look in the mirror um and I really believed that about myself of I'm just disgusted he basically was like do something about it and I was like you're not supposed to say that to your wife the first year of marriage um, but that's kind of his mentality and so before I go on I want to speak to the fact that if you have a man in your life a son a husband a boyfriend whatever ladies I mean he has loved me through every season of health he has loved me from every size from a size you know four to a 16 and everywhere in between and I can tell you that he just wants me to feel good and be healthy and feel good about myself. And, and men don't want to hear. It's not their job to fill us up daily with how do I look? How do I look? And I remember at that conference and I grew up in church. I am sure I've heard this verse a million times, but I remember sitting there and Psalm 139, 13 and 14. And it says, for you created me my inmost being. You, God, knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that to be true full well. 
And I remember hearing that verse like I had heard it for the first time in my life. And I just remember being convicted and, and sad and almost devastated, if you will, because when I reread that second part, it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. And I know that to be true. And I just remember thinking at that point, I was probably 25 years old and I just had shame thinking, and, and I'm not talking about ladies when you look in the mirror and in a vain way, like, oh, I got it going on. But just the fact that God created us and I had been to the Grand Canyon and I remember that feeling of like, oh, God is so awesome in his artwork and his handiwork, like who could ever think there's not a God? And I remember thinking that when I would look out over the lake or a sunset, but I had honestly never, ever in my life looked in a mirror or saw my reflection that I just didn't have sadness or disgust or, and it was that day that I just was like, God, take these chains from me. This is not of you. And, and I remember just thinking like apologizing to God, like every time I complain about myself and every time I have negative thought, God, I'm basically telling you, you messed up. You didn't do good when you made me. And I began that day to just pray, to have a different mindset, to see my body as, you know, this tool that should be used for him and I'm healthy and I can walk and I can run. And, you know, like anyone that's dealt with any kind of struggle or any kind of addiction, I would love to tell you like that day I prayed that prayer of repentance and repentance and I've been good ever since. I've never had, you know, Satan come back into my mind and, and have negative thoughts. That's not true, of course. But it was that day that I vowed to turn around. And the next verse she talked about was John 10:1. The thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come in order that you may have life in its abundance, in its fullness. And I just remember like being mad at all the wasted time and all those years that daily, hourly, that I let the thief come in into my mind and, and steal my joy and kill and destroy. And I would think back over all these celebrations of holidays or weddings or times that should be joyous. And I was allowing Satan to just take that joy away because I would wake up thinking about food or I would you know, be worried about it or go to bed thinking about it. And it was just all consuming. And the one thing that I want to say, if, if I say nothing else or you get nothing else from this, is I would ask this today. If you are a woman and you have any kind of young lady in your life, a mother, an older sister, an aunt, a coach, a teacher, a youth pastor's wife, I don't care who you are. If you have young women in your life, I beg that if you found yourself in that, that trap of negative self-talk when it comes to your body image or how God made you, that you just ask, please stop. And I didn't have children at that time, but I vowed that day that if I had a daughter, I would break this cycle. And so we use words in our house like healthy and unhealthy and strong and confident and um, we don't use the verbiage. I mean, the F word in our house is fat. <laughs> we don't use fat or skinny or we just don't. And, you know, I've been very guarded with my daughter. Um, and this is just something that's worked for us. I'm not saying that if, if you do this, you're bad or you're wrong or your, your daughter's, you know, set up for failure. But one of the reasons we chose not to allow our kids to have social media um, until they were out on their own was even as women, we have to be so careful when we're looking at that. And I, I just didn't want that one more thing because it's out there. It, it's definitely out there that they fight it enough as young girls. And so that's just something that I ask that, you know, if that's been an area that maybe you've been um, guilty of, that you're just careful with your verbiage and your words.
So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Do you need me to stop talking a minute? That's okay. We're, we're hearing an echo. I'm going to give it just a second. Okay. I still hear myself. So fast forward. Um, I'm going to take you to where I began to mentally heal with the idea of food and body image. And I'm going to fast forward you for time's sake to where now we have three children. And my children ages were two, three, and seven at the time. And I was a stay at home mom. And now I'm in my 30s. And I always laugh. I'm like in our 20s, you know, it was a lot about like, oh, how do we look? And in our 30s, for me, it was all about survival. I mean, three kids under the age of five, like that, that was physically exhausting. And so now I'm in my 30s. I'm a stay-at-home mom. And I'm, for lack of a better word, like I'm a hot mess. <laughs> my hormones are whacked. If, if you caught my kids' ages, um, one's 13 and one's 14. So um, needless to say, I was pregnant for a long time, back to back. And you know, if you've been through that phase, like it wreaks havoc on your body and your hormones and your emotions and, and all of those things. And at the time I had an undiagnosed thyroid condition. And so I, did, I wasn't even aware about that at the time. So, I mean, I woke up every morning and my main goal was when can I have my next nap? Like I was in pure survival mode and I, I was not good emotionally or physically or mentally, but I didn't know that. I was just surviving. And as moms, a lot of times, if, if we need to take care of ourselves or do something, we always say like, we'll do it later. We'll do it later. Our kids come first. Well, I mean, looking back, it was really a blessing in disguise because our daughter was about three and a half at the time going on four and she began to get sick night after night after night at 3 a.m. every morning. And so this started us on a path of um, doctor's visits and testing and they sent us to children's for about a year and a half on and off. And no one could find out what was wrong with her. And um, I'm not gonna share the whole story with you, but basically she would get these infections and end up in the hospital and they tested and poked and prodded everything on that baby girl. And we were just spiraling downward, like, what are we gonna do? And so after about a year and a half, here she is at Children's, we're thinking the best of the best, they come back to us and they're like, we actually have no idea what to do with her. And they had put her on this long-term antibiotic that I was not in favor of, but I didn't know any better. And so we're at this point now. And I remember I was about three days in with absolutely no sleep whatsoever. And I was just, you know, if you've ever had an ill family member or yourself, not having a diagnosis to me was 10 times more frustrating than having a diagnosis. And I just remember like crying out to God saying, you have got to give me someone or something like she just wasting away in front of us and no one had any answers. And it was probably one of the craziest God moments in my life. And I just knew that we were to take her to this man that was in Effingham, the area that we were living. He's a holistic chiropractor and I had never met him. I had never been in his office and I just knew like that's where we need to take her and eight o'clock couldn't come fast enough for me to call. And when we went in that day, he began that very day and was able to break it down for us and explain. And, and to this day, I've told him he was an absolute answer to our prayers and we still continue to use him. <laughs> and, um, but we started changing three major things at that point in our life. One, how we doctored. And, and hear me on this. We have family members and friends that are all MDs. And I thank God for their training. But they will be the first to tell you when it comes to medical traditional school, they have less than half of a semester of nutritional training. They are not trained on nutrition. They are trained to doctor and to prescribe. 
And so that, and I think it's exciting now, there are more functional medicine doctors and there are more doctors that I think are seeing the value of nutrition, but, but you know, I'm back 10, 11 years ago when we weren't finding a lot of that. So we changed the way that we doctored and we took a whole health approach and we started doctoring um, the issues, not just the symptoms. And it was at that point that we really changed our mindset of let food be thy medicine and, um, and not necessarily just throw prescriptions. And, and there's a time and place for medicine, hear me on that. Um, but a lot of times we see lots of over prescribed um, situations. So the first thing was how we doctored. The second thing was we just our nutrition. I mean, and also I wanted to say this earlier. If you hear me share something and you think, wow, they're crazy or that's extreme or my family could never do that. What you need to know is I'm 10 years into this journey. We did not do all of this from the beginning. Where we're at today was certainly not where we were at 10 years ago. So keep that in mind if, if something seems extreme. This is a way of life now, but this did not just all change on day one. But the second thing we went pretty extreme with was our nutrition. And for a, a period, we pretty well vowed if it did not come from the ground or have a mother or had more than three ingredients, it was not coming in our house. And, and we, we were not going to ask our daughter to live like this without us coming alongside. And the ironic part is I began to heal with all the craziness and hormones and things I had and, and didn't even realize it at the time. And then the third thing that happened, it was kind of like the perfect storm with our doctoring, our nutrition is there was a nurse that knew our story with our daughter through all of this. And she introduced us to a nutrition supplement company. And at the time we knew nothing about it. It was just getting off the ground, ground level. And we flew um, at the time they were based in Utah and we met the doctors and the formulators. And we wanted to see firsthand what we were gonna put in our daughter. And we believed her story, but we wanted to know for ourselves. And so, as I share some of the supplements that have worked for us, I know there are a million companies out there and you might have one that you like and you know and you trust. And this is not a um, sales promo <laughs> for that company, but I am gonna share some products just because those are the products that I know and that are clean and pure and organic. And Tammy will put a link up to that later. If you have questions later, you can absolutely ask me about what we've used and what we've liked. Um, but just to make reference, that's, that all happened at one time. And so the first thing that we realized, um, the, the very first thing we had to look at with Blakely was sugar. And long story short, her, her, condition, if you will, was she was a fungus carrier. And so when her immune system was weakened or low, um, sugar just set her off. And when it was a little bit higher and strong, she could eat certain things. And, and that was so perplexing to me because I had journaled and kept notes and kept track of all of this. And it was so weird because sometimes these foods would make her sick and sometimes they wouldn't. And I kept thinking it's got to be something diet related, but nothing made sense. And so sugar was the very first thing that we took a hard look at. And I, prior to this, knew nothing of the side effects and, and the things that it could do to you. Um, Tammy actually has a poll question on this, if you want to put that up. Yeah, I'm going to um, it over here. So we're going to give you a little quiz here. I'm going to join you and in the camera. And I will read it, but she'll put it on the screen. And your little quiz for you is... Do you know, according to the American Heart Association, how many teaspoons are recommended daily of sugar? And these numbers are, I think men get three more, but these numbers were for children and women. How many teaspoons are recommended daily by the American Heart Association of sugar? All right, we see some coming in. A few people are afraid to vote. We can't see who's voting for what. <laughs> no. 
And then I'll break it down for you what it is in grams too, because I know a lot of times when we read labels, they're in grams, not teaspoons. Okay, so there's the results. Okay. You guys did good. They're good students. Yeah, when I shared this with Tammy, she goes, man, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Six is right. Six teaspoons a day are recommended by the Daily um, American Heart Association. So if we break that down, let me get my notes here. What did we say? That's actually 25 grams, I believe I said in a day, okay? So, the next thing that I wanna do, now don't get discouraged on this, because I remember seeing this, and when I started learning about this, I was like, I'm so defeated, we can never eat again. <laughs> you can, but um, I'm just gonna give a very basic menu of probably what my kids had, and, and I'm saying kids, me too, um, probably what a typical, and honestly conservative day because there were times we had way more than this and so i don't know if you have that screen because it's a lot of numbers tammy you um, to put it up? yes and so i'm gonna have tammy share this whoops sorry i'm glad i didn't knock that purple yeah that would have been great. Over. <laughs> um because this was just kind of what a, a typical breakfast lunch and dinner would look like in our home and so knowing that the average child should have 12 to 25 sugar grams per day, um, this was just very eye-opening to me. And so for breakfast, I put down a Pop-Tart and one serving of orange juice because that's an easy, um, you know, put that up kind of thing. So a Pop-Tart and juice for breakfast. For lunch, I put down um, a PB&J with yogurt, animal crackers, and a glass of milk because, you know, milk does the body good. <laughs> um, so we grew up thinking and learning. Um, for snack, maybe in the afternoon, a little tiny pack of fruit snacks and a juicy juice, you know, the little tiny cartons of juice that are easy to, to give your kids. And, you know, the packaging will tell you made with real fruit juice. <laughs> um, and then a typical dinner might be chicken nuggets, which actually have zero sugar, ketchup, one teaspoon, which I don't know about your kids, but mine would like do this with the ketchup. It definitely wasn't a teaspoon, but one teaspoon has seven. And then, hey, let's, you know, make them healthy and throw some grapes in. Grapes actually had 20 for a single serving of sugar grams. And then another glass of milk. And then for dessert, they got a little pudding cup. And so I just put this as a sample menu, but even at that, it's kind of conservative. The total for the day on that little sample menu is 143.8 grams of sugar. <laughs> now, my family would tell you I'm the sugar Nazi. And I kind of was for a while because I could tell you within the sugar gram where my daughter was gonna get sick again. And we, we treated her really almost like type one diabetes for a couple of years until her gut healed and until she got better. Um, so I share that with you because that was pretty defeating to me. I'm like, I can never feed my kids again because, um, you know, sugar, this was an interesting fact that blew my mind that I did not know about sugar. When you have sugar, it suppresses your immune system up to six hours. And that's crazy to me. And it's just like throwing gasoline on a fire with any kind of disease or cancer or illness. And it, it makes me crazy to, if you've ever gone through a cancer unit with a loved one or, or walked in or, or you see these, um, and I'm not beating them up, it's just education is knowledge and you walk in these cancer units, and of course they wanna make people feel better, and they have ice cream, or donuts, or pastry, and I'm like, ah, it's just like throwing gasoline. Um, you know, when we have those diseases, we want our body to be alkaline versus acidic, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But, um, you know, I also go back to the days of when our, our children were little, and the, you know, someone might say, well, drink Pedialyte, or, 
a, you know, an elderly person drink Pediasure and you flip that over and you look at those sugar grams and it's just like, wow. So a couple things I wanted to share real quick for, for time's sake, um, some alternatives because I can't stand when I go to a conference or, or a training and they tell you all the gloom and doom, but they don't give you any like practical things to take away. So one thing that we started doing is making a shake or a smoothie every single morning. And I'm careful when I say the word smoothie, because if you go through a fast food restaurant or you go to you know, a smoothie shop, um, that can be very deceiving. There are lots and lots of sugar packed in there if you don't know what's in a quote smoothie. So one alternative that we have done for years is, and I tried to find as many items as I could even from Walmart but we have an organic protein shake that we like and that actually has zero sugar so we do one scoop of that we pour that in with a cup of water or if you like that milk flavor i suggest almond milk it has one gram in a cup um, then we throw in um i love the greens and this is a great way i'm gonna go really close this is something i picked up at walmart um, you can get some organic greens and this is a great way to sneak those vegetables in and I used to buy the spinach and all the vegetables but they would go bad quickly and um, it was expensive so this is a great way you just take a scoop or a half a scoop if you don't want that much and throw it in um, we also throw in let me see here chia seed which you can tell mine's almost out uh, chia seed I can't go into all of the things that chia seed is, has benefits for. Google it. It will blow your mind of all the things that chia seed will do. And you can't taste it. It's, it's basically you don't know it's in there and your kids certainly won't know it's in there. So I do my, my protein powder, my chia seed, my scoop of greens, my water, and then for a little bit of flavor, I will take some wild frozen organic blueberries. And I don't do a cup. Um, because fruit still has sugar in it, but I do about a fourth, a fourth of a, a scoop. And so now you have a morning shake that everybody can take. It's still convenient. You can make one big batch at once. All five of you can get a shake out of it. And now you're looking at about three sugar grams for your morning out the door with protein that's going to keep you full. Chia seed will keep you full versus 44 grams with Pop-Tart and orange juice that you're gonna have a sugar crash on. So that's just one little thing that we tweaked. You want me to taste uh, it? You can taste it. You might need to stir it up. Tammy's gonna be my taste. I'm gonna be the guinea pig. I did not, it's kind of settled. I made it before you got here. I'd give you a straw, but I can't find one. Are you gonna have purple? The purple's from the blueberry, but it hides the green if your kids don't wanna see green. <laughs> if it's bad, are you going to tell us? <laughs> and I put in hers, it's good. I put in hers the vanilla. You can do chocolate. I don't like chocolate. Um, you could do chocolate or you could do strawberry. Um, and you can put whatever. The key is when you throw that little bit of frozen fruit in there, um, just be conservative because if you put heaps and heaps of fruit, you're kind of undoing, um, you know, the goodness of it. So that was one of the things. Another thing, and Tammy can share the recipe with you. Um, we call these little guys protein bites. And I told Tammy I had um, about two dozen made this morning and my kids grabbed them on the way out the door. And that's just another very simple recipe. Have one. I'm, I'm all um, for being the guinea pig. So, hey, it's healthy. So a scoop of protein powder. Um, I'm gluten-free, so I have to do the gluten-free oats. Um, I These threw are really good. in flaxseed. Um, awesome benefits of flaxseed. Chia seed. Um, just a tiny bit of honey um, to, to keep it together. And, I, and mini chocolate chips. And so these are like a total treat for us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and as I go through this, that's the other thing. Please don't think like we're perfect. <laughs> we are never going to be perfect with our food. We are strategic. We try to be strategic. So in my kids, now that they're older, they know. The other day, I couldn't believe my daughter passed up. My, my husband's the bad one. Like he's the, the sweet tooth of the family, but he's getting better. And 
they went through Dairy Queen and I couldn't believe that my daughter passed it up. And she said, oh, I wanna have a treat later tonight. And like, that made me so proud because she's being strategic. She's still gonna have a treat. We're, we're not gonna be, this is bad and food is bad. And, but we're just thinking through, would I rather have it you know, today or tomorrow? And the society that we got in was every meal and every occasion and everything was celebrate. And I had to switch my mindset of so many people will say, I deserve, I deserve to have a treat. I deserve, I shifted my mindset. I deserve to be around for my grandkids. I deserve to feel good every morning. Nothing, I'm terrible with cliches, but nothing tastes as good as feeling good feels. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually right, but you get what I'm saying. And, and that's kind of where I was at. So I'm looking at time here. I do not want to bore you. I'm going to skip around, but um, you know, there's a slide on there that Tammy can share just about the things versus um, being alkaline and being acidic and, and she can send that out. And um, we definitely want our bodies to be in an alkaline I state. This from the side. Um, you know, cancer cannot grow in an alkaline body. Um, disease cannot thrive in an alkaline body. And so we want, and you can Google like the alkaline diet, you know, things that make us acidic and toxic are, you know, medications, eating late at night, um, stress, um, processed foods, all of those type of things lead to being acidic. And we want our bodies to be more in an alkaline state. I'm going to touch just real briefly on a couple of supplements that we have not gone a single day without in 10 years. One is called Goyen. And again, Tammy will link this if you want to shop for yourself or you have questions. But Goyen, we call family, well, I used to call it marriage counselor in a bottle. Now we call it family counseling in a bottle. Goyen is a food. It's a supplement. And one thing I want to say about supplements is not all supplements are created equal. And you really want to do your due diligence on making sure that they're clean and pure and organic and not full sweeteners that I stay away from all artificial sweeteners, sucralose and um, saccharin and the pink packets, the blue packets, the yellow packets, you know, your body would rather you give it a small amount of the real sugar than all those artificial sweeteners. Um, stevia is the only one that um, I allow in any of my supplements or any of my food, and I still use it sparingly, but stevia is the cleanest. Um, but anyway, Goyen is a hormone balancer. We have seen story after story, even in our own family, where it evens the mood. And, and people think women are emotional and moody, but men have um, hormones too. <laughs> they get grumpy and they, you know, get, and I can remember walking in on a Saturday morning and my kids have taken this since they were two, three, and you know, six. And I can remember within a minute of walking in my house, I could tell you which ones of my kids had had Goyen and which had not. So awesome for hormone and mood. Um, another supplement that we absolutely don't go without is called Daily Build. This is just a multivitamin that's clean. Um, we cannot get from our foods what we once could. Even if we eat healthy and organic and straight out of the garden um, through our soils and our farming process, we cannot get all the nutrients we need from our foods today. Um, organic sulfur is something that if you've never Googled organic sulfur, do so and look at the benefits. Amazing. Two of my favorite, three of my favorite benefits from organic sulfur are joint pain. It's an awesome detoxer, pulls things from the body that shouldn't be there. Awesome for skin. If you've ever had issues with skin or your teenagers, um, my kids take organic sulfur every day. And in the summer, it's awesome. It actually keeps mosquitoes away. <laughs> I used to be very prone to mosquito bites. And if you take organic sulfur, I always tell anyone going on a missions trip, take organic sulfur, get it in your system. Um, helps with migraines, the, the, it's really endless. Um, you know, this is something else I need to highlight. 
and, and I won't camp out here long, but um, this is called, it's a wheatgrass energy drink. And now hear me on this, not energy like a monster or a Red Bull or something like that, not synthetic. Um, I have taken this every single solitary day for 10 years. <laughs> um, it has a wheatgrass component, not wheat like gluten. I can't have that, but it's a wheatgrass is the main ingredient. And it's called energy, but I really wish it was called clarity. It helps with focus and clarity. And if any of you know me, um, that's a great benefit to me. <laughs> so we love that. Just all kinds of products. Um, this is a cool thing. I, you know, the other thing is years ago, 10 or 11 years ago, it was horrible to try to find like natural, good, healthy, organic foods. Now they're everywhere. Walmart even carries um, a hydrate alkaline water. Now I've used for years, just these little drops and you squirt it in your water um, to make your water alkaline. And we had an al um, alkaline filter on our water system, but now even Walmart sells alkaline water. And so, you know, we've come a long way from where we were years ago. And, you know, the last thing I want to mention as we wrap up, I know I'm, as my husband would say, baby, you got a lot of words. I know I do. So <laughs> um, I'm going to end my words. But the last thing that I cannot end without mentioning is I would love to tell you when I switched to one of these things, like I was right where I needed to be. Um, I had made improvements and I felt better, but like I had mentioned, I have thyroid issues and different things and I was teaching this and, and doing seminars and training, but I still wasn't where I felt my best and, and wasn't where I wanted to be. And I would tease my husband. He ate like I looked and I looked like he ate and, and I eat clean and healthy and I don't like sweets and I cut the sugar out. And I was still um, hanging on to this excess that I was like, I, I don't, I want to feel my best. It wasn't about how I looked or a size. I just wanted to feel good. And there is a book that Tammy's going to share. Um, and I've actually introduced her to it too, that a friend introduced to me. And I have read, um, I sat through seminars about intermittent fasting in the past. So this wasn't even a new concept, but I don't know why my brain grabbed onto it this time. This book, Delay Don't Deny, and I have no connection to this lady or this book other than I loved it and the simplicity of it. Um, I have heard other intermittent fasting um, type things that were very sciencey and just over my head, but I, this book has changed my life. <laughs> I had the most freedom that I have ever had in my entire life when it comes to food. And it's been a process. It's been a God thing. It's been a journey, but I would highly encourage you. You can listen to it. Um, you can do it on your Kindle or it's an easy read. I read it in one day and I love the book delay. Don't deny. And she talks about intermittent fasting and, and that's been a godsend for me. And so it was very fitting that I wanted to end with this verse, um, with that book, because I really do have freedom. In Luke 12, 22 through 24, it says, Jesus says to his followers, so I tell you, don't worry about the food that you need to live or about the clothes you need for your body. Life is more than food and the body is more than clothes. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest and they don't have storerooms or barns, but God feeds them and you are worth so much more than birds. <laughs> and I love that verse because it's just, God knew 2000 years ago, like stop stressing about the food. Um, this shouldn't be a, a negative thing. And I just, um, I appreciate you letting me share. And the last slide, I think that Tammy had to share, um, things I put on there was just have a can-do attitude. You know, you're not going to change every single thing in one day, but just get the mindset of we can do this. We can change one little thing that will lead to big changes. Um, again, the goal isn't to be perfect, but it's to be strategic. Um, one important thing that I always say is have a support system in place. Um, I would dare to say that maybe not everyone in your family is going to say, yay, we're on board, but find one person. My friend Becky has been with me from the beginning on my nutrition journey. 
and she's like my person with nutrition. Find, I, I'll be your person. <laughs> you know, find that one person and have a support team. And just remember, it's never too late to start. So I'm going to end that there. I think Tammy had one more poll question. Um, if we were to ever revisit um, the area of nutrition, she had some, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it's know, hard to do. It's so I hard to do come from around, this come side. Around, come join me. <laughs> She's been so awesome, you guys. She's working like crazy behind the scenes here. Um, but one of the topics was just, if we dove into another area of nutrition, what would you be most interested in was her question. And so she's going to leave you with one more poll. And I just want to thank you for um, jumping in and just remember that it's a journey and it's been fun sharing. So thank you. I'm still drinking my shake, by the way. <laughs> You're going to be so healthy today. We didn't ask how old they were, did we? We're nope, not, we didn't get to that. We're not supposed to ask the women how old they are. Oh, good. The one I could go on forever is on hormone health. So it starts with the blue bottle. Hormones are real, they're real evil. You put none of them, you were gonna let someone vote for nothing? <laughs> that would tell you if you did a sucky job. <laughs> yeah, 100% none of them, shut her down. So anyway, well that is all we have today. Make sure you join us next week. What's next week's topic, Tammy? Next week is personal Bible study. And I know um, Norma is going to be thrilled that you went an hour because she didn't think she could say anything in 30 minutes. It's only 12.54. I didn't go a whole hour. Don't exaggerate. <laughs> I went long. <laughs> so good news is you're at home. You can shut me down. I don't know. So anyway, thank you. It was fun. It was awesome. Thank you all very, very much. Um, you will get in your email tomorrow a link to a post webinar survey. We want you to complete that and let us know how you liked it and if there's anything we can do better before next week. So have a great day, everyone.